to this problem in our text today. John says in chapter 1 verse 21, and they asked him, what then are you Elijah? Why do the Jews ask him if he would be Elijah, if John the Baptist would be Elijah? Why specifically Elijah? and not any other one of the prophets of God in the Old Testament. The answer is that there is no prophecy or prediction in the whole scriptures of the Old Testament says that one of the prophets of God in the Old Testament would come in the future. But there is one about the coming of the prophet Elijah. God said in the book of Malachi, in the Old Testament, the book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 5, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And so we have here a clear prophecy that God would send Elijah before the day of of the Lord. You know, the Jews expected the fulfillment of this prophecy by the coming of Elijah himself. Therefore, when the Lord Jesus came and lived on this earth, some Jews thought that he would be Elijah. We read in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. Jesus asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And so we see here that some Jews thought about Jesus that he was Elijah. They based this thought on the prophecy of Malachi, the prophet Malachi, chapter 4, verse 5, which I just mentioned, that Elijah would come. The Jews were, of course, wrong when they thought that Jesus was Elijah.
another prophecy that was fulfilled and will be fulfilled twice was fulfilled and will be fulfilled God says by the prophet Joel in the Old Testament in the book of Joel chapter 2 verse 28 to 31 we read God is saying and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions and also on my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth blood and fire and pillars of smoke the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. This prophecy was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came upon the church. In the book of Acts chapter 2, the Apostle Peter, in his preaching on that day, he says in, uh, in the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 16, to 20 he says exactly the same words of this prophecy in the book of Joel chapter 2 Peter says this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel and it shall come to pass in the last days says God that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs on the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord this prophecy of Joel is yet to be fulfilled also it was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost and it will be fulfilled again in the future in Matthew's gospel chapter 24 the Lord Jesus Christ speaks of his second coming speaks of his coming in the future and of the judgment and he says in Matthew's gospel chapter 24 verse 29 immediately after the tribulation of those days the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light you see here the Lord Jesus Christ is saying that what was spoken by the prophet Joel will be fulfilled in the future before his coming also in the apocalyptic book of the Bible this book says the same things we read in the book of Revelation chapter 6 verse 12 John says I looked when he opened the sixth seal when the Lord Jesus Christ opened the sixth seal about the judgment and behold there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became like blood we can see here very clearly that there are prophecies 
in the Bible that have dual fulfillment. Like this prophecy of Joel. It was fulfilled in, uh, in the day of Pentecost and it will be fulfilled in the future before the last coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So there are prophecies in the Bible that have dual fulfillment. It was fulfilled and it will be fulfilled in the future or it was fulfilled twice in the past. witnesses will have power to turn water to blood. This is of course Moses. You know in the Old Testament God sent Moses to lead his people Israel out of Egypt where they were enslaved. Pharaoh refused to let them go. To make Pharaoh let his people go, God used Moses to strike the Egyptians with ten plagues. Chapter 7 of the book of Exodus tells us that the first plague was that God used Moses to turn the waters of Egypt into blood. Moses will be one of these two witnesses who will come in the future as we read in the book of Revelation chapter 11. They will have power to turn water to blood. So Moses will be one of these two witnesses. Also, those two witnesses will have power to shut heaven so that no rain will fall in the days of their prophecy. The days of their prophecy are, as we have read in the book of Revelation chapter 11, 1,200 
and sixty days. One thousand two hundred and sixty days, that's about three years and six months. Who shut the heaven so it didn't rain on earth for three years and a half, or three years and six months? That's Elijah. The Bible tells us in the book of uh, First Kings, chapter 17 to 19, that prophet of God Elijah shut the heaven so that no rain would fall. He also prayed that it would rain. He prayed that it would not rain and it didn't rain on the earth. And he prayed again and it rained after three years and six months. So Elijah shut the heaven and it did not rain on earth for three years and six months. So the other witness of these two witnesses who will come in the future according to the book of Revelation chapter 11 is Elijah. problem here. The Lord Jesus says that Elijah is John the Baptist, but John the Baptist says that he is not. In John's Gospel chapter 1 verse 21, 
And they asked him, the Jews asked John the Baptist, what then, are you Elijah? He said, I am not. That means Jesus contradicts John. Jesus says John is Elijah, and John says that he is not Elijah. How could the Bible contain contradictions like this one? And who is right and who is wrong? Jesus or John? Who is right and who is wrong? In fact, there is no contradiction whatsoever in the Bible. And both the Lord Jesus and John, both of them are right. The Lord Jesus says that John the Baptist is the fulfillment of the prophecy of the book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 5. And that's true that Elijah would come is the fulfillment of the prophecy about the coming of Elijah. And that's true. And John says that he is not Elijah. And that's also true. He is not Elijah himself. John the Baptist is not Elijah personally. There is nothing in the Bible that teaches us about the so-called reincarnation, which is a Buddhist doctrine. No one died or went to heaven and his spirit reincarnated in another person or lived in another born person. That's why John the Baptist says that he is not Elijah, because he is not Elijah personally. He is not Elijah personally. He is not Elijah himself, but he is the fulfillment of the prophecy about the coming of Elijah.
Elijah, the prophet of God, stood up against Ahab, an evil king of Israel. He stood up against Ahab and against his wife Jezebel, who made people worship the Baal and idols. Elijah also challenged the prophets of Baal and restored people to worshiping and serving the Lord God of Israel, Yahweh. In the same manner, John the Baptist, who came in the spirit and power of Elijah, John the Baptist stood up against Herod. He challenged Herod, the king, the evil king. John the Baptist came to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord as the angel Gabriel said of him to Zechariah's father. To fulfill his mission, Elijah was in the wilderness and had a leather belt around his waist. Also John the Baptist. To fulfill his mission, he was in the wilderness and had a leather belt around his waist. And so we can see very clearly that there is big similarity between Elijah and John the Baptist. John the Baptist came in the spirit and power of Elijah to restore people to worshiping Yahweh, to worship the Lord God of Israel, exactly like what Elijah did.